give me my baby. But he's mine. He's my baby. All right, what's going on here? You still insist that's your baby? No. I guess I made a mistake. Sally Kelton. Is that your married name? I'm not married. Take the child home. Be here at 3.30 tomorrow. The DA handles the kidnapping case. Blue eyes. Blue eyes. Sally, come here, quick. Did you bring the friction tape? Gee, Papa, I forgot it. We'll never hear the end of it. That you, Sally? Yes, Mom. It's about time. Gee, it's been a beautiful day. How long do you think it takes to boil potatoes? Ten minutes? I forgot them, Mom. That's fine. So one do you even remember to come home. Did you bring the stuff for that pipe? No, of course you didn't. Too busy tearing around with a bunch of good-for-nothing hoodlums to ever give your mother and father one single thought. Let me take. I'm you sorry, something. Mom. So I forgot it. Well, I'll go out and get it now. But do you have to keep at me. If I don't keep at you, you'll end up like all the rest of those little snips you run around with. Been to my feet since six thirty this morning. All I asked you for was a pound of potatoes and something to plug that pipe with. But no, you got more important things to think about. Well, let me tell you something, young lady. You can eat stew without potatoes. You can sit under a leaky ceiling for the rest of your life, as far as I'm concerned. You just don't want to help me, that's, that's all. That's not true, Ma, and you know it. So I forget things once in a while. Well, you'd have to keep nagging at me. If I nag at you, it's for your own good. Because I don't want you to slave around the kitchen for the rest of your life like I have. Because I want you to meet a respectable man who can do things for you. How do you ever expect to get anywhere hanging around with a lot of drugstore idiots? Angie, why don't you leave her alone? Get so I can't hear myself think. You haven't had a thought in your head for the last ten years, so just keep out of this. I know what I'm doing. Rock it. Come on, girl, rock it. Skip a beat and hit it. Do it. You won't regret it. Get it. What are you looking at? Hit it again. Fun, isn't it? Nothing matters, just you do it. Don't 
to remember me? I'm the one that sold you that classy number. <laughs> On you, it looks good. Sure. I'd like you to meet some friends of mine. Dally Kelton and uh, Bill Aiken. How are you? Oh, yeah, why don't you sit down with us? Sure. Take that. Have a beer. Okay. Uh, you'll excuse us. We've simply got to see some friends of ours across the way. Smoke? No, thanks. You come here often? Oh, no. These kind of places bore me silly. I only came tonight because Bill and Nancy just insisted I come. What do you do? Well, if you must know, I work here. As I, I work in the cafe next door. It's really all one place. So you see, it's, it's kind of old hat to come here. And why do you? Well, I was sort of curious to see if you could really play. The last one we had was awful. Can I? Gee, you were terrific. How old are you? Around 20. That's what I thought. You think fast, don't you? Mm, no. I don't think at all if I can help it. Look, I've got to get back. Anything in particular you'd like to hear? Any old thing will do. Okay. You ask for it.
might like something hot to drink. Of course, it's kind of cold now. Thanks. Hey. Where have you been? I didn't see you around yesterday. Well, Tuesday's my day off. What do you do on your day off? Nothing much. You're a funny kid, you know. You really liked the way I was giving out just now, didn't you? It was the best I ever heard. You don't get to hear much of anything good around here. When our Victrola worked, I used to go down the street to the man who owns the record shop and bribe him to lend me a few good records once in a while. Gee, that was something. And one day the machine went bluey on me and scratched up a few records, and that was that. And? Oh, nothing. I must sound kind of crazy. No, you don't. I used to think I was going to be the greatest piano player that ever lived. <laughs> really set the world on fire. What happened? What happened? Listen, honey, piano players are a dime a dozen. Everywhere I went, there were guys like me who wanted to play great piano, thought they were going places. I met them all. Just a big family of little failures. Oh, you'll make it. I just know you will. What are you doing tonight? Nothing much. Why? You want to meet me after I get through here? Grab a bite somewhere, say about 11.30? Fine. Okay. Nice kid. Sure. Hi, Mom. Did you bring the apron? Yes. My head's killing me. Gee, I'm sorry, Ma. Here, honey. Thanks. What's your hurry? You going someplace? Well, uh, Nancy and I thought we'd take in a show after dinner. Thought we'd take in a late show. Well, why don't you stay home once in a while and get a night's rest? I say, why don't you stay home once in a while and get some sleep? I get plenty of sleep, Ma. I feel fine. Yes, you feel fine now, because you're young. In about five years, you'll suddenly fall flat in your face one day. And don't say I didn't tell you. Are you listening to me? Yes, Ma, but I've got to get dressed. Not gonna have you running around half dressed.
think of it, Mark. But you'll be on a train in a couple of hours, and I'll miss you. you miss me over here. city sounds so far away. Will you be there long? I don't know. Depends on how I feel. I guess I always have to keep on the go. Someday I'll get someplace. Where can I write you? 23 Walnut Street. A friend of mine found a room for me. You ever there? Look me up. Will you miss me too, Steve? All right, young lady, let's have a little talk, shall we? Is this your car? No, sir. Well, whose is it? My girlfriend. Her brother's, that is. Oh, I see. You ever have a ticket? No. Where do you live? A couple of blocks from here. License? I left it home. What's your name? Sally Kelton. No license? Driving 50 miles an hour? That's pretty good. Folks let you do this often? Oh, no, they don't even know about this. Please, officer, if you'll just let me go this time, I promise I'll never do it again. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to personally deliver you home and give you all a piece of my mind. Now, go ahead. Well, all right, Mrs. Kelton. I hold you and your husband responsible for her behavior from now on. But if it ever happens again, I'm going to book her. You watch your step. Go on! Say it! Say it! Stop it, Sally! Don't carry me for alone. It'll keep till later. Let's go back to bed and try to get an hour's sleep.
Here, stick this under your back. Go on. Thanks. It's okay. I hope it doesn't smell too gamey. Oh, I, uh, been on a fishing trip. I caught a couple of little beauties. Oh, I got them up there in the bank. Oh, it just smells fine, thanks. By the way, the name's uh, Drew Baxter. What's yours? Mine's Sally Kelp. Sally Kelp. Nice name. Where are you going? I'm going to Capital City. Same in here. That, that's my hometown. I hate to bother you, but... Uh, it's a pleasure. Well, I was wondering, do you happen to know of a room I could get in Capital City that isn't too expensive? A room? Yeah, there's a pal of mine named Mrs. Nye over on East Street. She runs a pretty nice place. I had a friend of mine stand there once. I never caught him scratching. <laughs> this is nice. She's a pretty good old dame. Well, thanks a lot. That's... You alone? I mean, uh, you know, no friends or relatives in town? Oh, well, I have some relatives and some friends, but... Well, I, I don't want to just barge in on him. Oh, yeah, sure. Look, I've got an idea. Don't get me wrong, but, well, if you're not doing anything tomorrow night, how about a meal on the 50-cent guided tour? Well, that's awfully sweet of you, but... Well, I have another engagement. Oh. Okay. But if you're, uh, if you're at a loose end, well, give me a buzz. Irving 2842, I'm at the gas at 7. What? You know, the gas area, drive in, serve yourself sort of thing, you know, gas station. Oh. I manage the place. Hey, bud. Yeah? Is there any part of this will keep till tomorrow? Oh, yeah, sure. Great. surprised to see me. Yeah? What gets? Oh, Steve, isn't it wonderful? Here we are. Oh, aren't you glad to see me? Sure, I'm glad to see you. Well, isn't this kind of crazy? What do you mean, Steve? Well, what's it all about? Well, I... I left home. I couldn't stand things the way they were anymore. Wait a minute. You mean you just pulled up stakes for good? Yes. What are you going to do? Well, I'll get a job. I, I got a room this morning. And it's only a few blocks from here, so we'll, we'll be able to see each other all the time now. Steve, you... You don't seem very glad to see me. It isn't that, Sally. I just think it was a wacky thing for you to do. Leaving your folks traipsing way up here. I'm busy. I've got a million things to do. I won't have any time to spend with you. Gee, Steve, I, I'm sorry to bother you. I just wanted to be with you. You said if I ever came this way to look you up. Sally, Sally, don't get me wrong. I think the world of you, you know that, but... 
Well, I didn't expect you. I made other plans. I'm up to my ears in a deal I'm working on. I just don't have any free time, that's all. Look, look, I tell you what. I'll call you the first free night I get and we'll do the town, okay? Okay. I'd make it tonight, but I'm all jammed up with some piano arrangements I'm doing for a guy. Sure. Come on, have a cup of coffee, huh? Then I want to play you something I wrote. No, Steve, I, I think I better go now. Well, have a cup of coffee. No, I, I really have to go. Come on, Sally, let's have it. What's the money situation? I can let you have a little. Thanks, Steve. I'll be fine. I guess I better go now. What's the phone number where you're staying? I'll remember it. Chester 1343. Chester 1343. It's a hall phone, so the landlady will answer. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be running along. You will call, won't you, Steve? <laughs> what do you think? Goodbye, Steve. So long, honey. We'll have a coat. Here, here's a chair. Hey, this is a wonderful surprise. You know, I never expected to clap eyes on you again. Did you get a little sleep? Yeah. There. Hey, come on now. Nothing's that bad. Oh, Sally. Here, blow hard a couple of times, you feel like a new person. Thanks. That's us, stuff. <laughs> Drew, I guess I need a job. I hate to bother you, but... Well, there isn't anyone else I can turn to. What's the matter? Relatives give you the brush? Yeah, I, I guess you'd call it that. I've got an idea. One of the kids here is getting married next week. That makes us short a girl. How about taking a crack at it? Well, that sounds wonderful, but... Well, I don't know anything about that kind of thing. You don't have to. Look pretty, smile when they hand you the dough. Be sure you give the right chains and you're in. And have dinner with me tonight. Oh, gee. Drew, I, I don't know how to thank you, but... Well, I'm gonna try awfully hard. That's all settled, and you start Wednesday. But tonight you gotta eat, so... Well, how about my invitation? Well, I'm kind of tired tonight. I, I think I'll go home and take it easy. You understand, don't you? That's the story of my life, honey. I always understand. But, uh, look, I'm the boss, and you'll have to lose your job. Ah, but you're such a nice girl. I'll let it go this time. Okay? Drink. Yes? What do you want? Is it for me, Mrs. Knight? No, he left about a month ago. You're welcome. They're all alike, honey. Never call when you want them to.
Hello. Granada Club? May I speak to Steve Ryan, please? Tell him it's Miss Kelton calling. Hello, Steve? What? Oh, he, he's left already? No. No message. I want to have a big discussion with you during lunch hour. Sure, Drew. Am I tired? Brother, this is one day I'll really be glad to see over. Here, double day, good for you. No. What I wanted to talk to you about was last Saturday night you gave me the brush. This Saturday night you're not going to get away with it. Wake up and go on and eat. You're getting too thin. Well, how about me going crazy tonight and spending three bucks on you for dinner? Okay. Swell, but don't wear the family jewels. This is strictly delicatessen night. Now go on and eat. See, watch the smoke in that one. When it goes through the tunnel, see the smoke? Look at this one. Sally, the light, watch it on the front. Right here, see it? And in the back, see it there? Wonderful. You want to see a good night effect? Watch yeah. this. Night. Now watch day. See? Night. Day. One and both. Oh, you want them. I know it. So anyway, when I when I got back from overseas, the first thing I did was blow on my pants some really good track. You can't get them to really zip unless your tracks are the best. And then I got old man Green who owns this place to let me use it. One minute. We're ready to go. Hook them up, and we're off. Oh, no, not again. Well, here I go. Hold the fort. Drew, what is it? Are you all right? Yeah, OK. It's funny. I wonder what you're going to ask about that, Sally. I had a little skirmish with a mortar shell. Plastic. Bad habit of mine. I never watch where I'm going. Hey, you get back up there. Yes, sir. Just be a minute now. What about your folks, Drew? Oh, my mother died when I was a kid, and father passed away about three years ago. Oh. You have any family? Yeah. But I guess they don't want any part of me by now. Look, Sally, I, I don't want to pry, but... Well, don't you think you ought to let them know where you are? Huh? Don't worry, I knew on the bus that night you were pulling up stakes, running away from something. Well, let's not talk about it now, huh? No, okay. We're ready to go now. No. Hold on. There it goes. Now watch it this time, Sally. It goes all the way around the corner, over there and through the tunnel, and then watch the drop gate come down as it comes out the tunnel. Watch the drop gate over there. There it goes, see it? It goes all the way down, and then you go around the bridge, and there's another drop gate over here. Now keep your eyes on it this time. This goes by, a little man comes out. Watch him. There it goes. Now watch when it goes through the bridge, and it gets over here, a little man comes out of a place. Just as soon as it gets the track. Now watch it. There he goes, Sally. Look. Wait a minute. Would you mind taking me home, Drew? Okay. 
Sure. It's, it's just that I'm kind of dead on my feet. Okay, Sally. Drew, you don't know what this has meant to me tonight. You run a wonderful railroad. You really think so, Sally? Come on, home you go. Come in. Hello, Steve. Hello. I've been calling you day after day. Didn't you get my messages? Yeah. I called you earlier this morning, too. I didn't answer the phone this morning. Steve, I know you're busy and I hate to bother What is it, Sally? What is it? You'd said you'd call me and you haven't. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm all tied up with this stuff. The guy's paying me for it and I've got to meet a deadline. It just isn't going right. Maybe if you took things easier, Steve. No, no, no. It's not that. It's me. I can't concentrate. Got to get it through because I need the extra dough. I'm pulling up stakes the end of this week. Heading for South America. You're leaving? Yep. I don't know what it is. Stay in one town too long, I get stir crazy. Can't see straight anymore. So I'm taking off. Maybe this time I'll hit the jackpot. Steve, you can't mean that. You're not going to go. You're not leaving. Look, Sally, that's the way it is. Maybe it's a sickness with me. I don't know. I got to keep going till I find some place where I belong. Then take me with you. I'll take care of you. We can be married. I I'll help you find where you belong. Oh, please, Steve. It means everything to me. You won't be sorry. You couldn't stop caring just like that. Look, Sally. You're a good kid. Someday you'll settle down with five kids and a husband with a pipe, but I'm not that guy. I've got to keep moving. Travel light, don't you see? Maybe I'll live miserably ever after, but that's the way it is with me. You never cared anything about me, did you? And all the time I thought it was the most wonderful thing I'd ever known, the way I felt about you. I thought you felt that way, too. And all the time you didn't care, not even a little bit. I must have seemed awfully silly and cheap to you. Mustn't I? Shut up. Well, that's the way I feel. Silly and cheap. Shut up! Now, you listen to me. All my life, I've stuck to one principle, never get involved. And you know why? Because I'm tired, Sally. I'm tired of rooms like this. I'm tired of cheap, out-of-tune pianos. I'm tired of joints. If I'm ever going to get where I'm going, I have to do it alone. But getting something, Sally. We were two people who knew what we were doing, remember? I never gave you any phony ideas about getting married and growing old together. That's something you got into your head. If I've hurt you, Sally, I'm sorry, but I've never lied to you. Now get that straight. Thanks, Steve. I've got it straight. 
Thanks a lot. When you walk around with a long look on your face, it goes to your feet. When your dogs start barking, you feel bad all over. Hey, will you keep still? You know, every time I've looked around the last couple of weeks, I find you moping in the corner. It's got to stop. I'll let up, will you, Drew? No, I won't let up. And another thing, I'm not going to ask you any questions because it's none of my business. If you want to tell me you're okay? If you don't, it's still okay. But, baby, when you got a headache, don't go around giving it to the rest of the world. Drew, that's not fair. Yes, it is. And another thing, you and I are going to take the day off tomorrow and go out and have some fun. So sharpen yourself up a little and we'll, we'll live. Besides, you've been looking like a wreck lately. Well, I like that. But cute. Feel better? Yeah, I guess so. Leave it to old man Baxter. Gee, you're terrific. I know it. on it just for me? How did you know it cost seven fifty? Well, looks like it. <laughs> hey, you had a bee on you. Well, thanks. Sally, you know, that's the first time I've really seen you look happy in weeks. Well, I am happy. You could forget here. In fact, now I'm thinking about all the nice things that ever happened to me. For instance? Oh, when I was seven and my dad took me to the circus. Go on, I'm listening. In high school, the spring play, and the curtain came down and everybody applauded. I played Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Elizabeth who? Queen Elizabeth, Queen of England. You mean you played the old dame that chopped off all the heads? She had to be stern. <laughs> Sally, you're a remarkable woman. Naturally, you were big stuff after that. Pretty soon after that, I left school. 
I had to go to work to, to help out at home. I was awfully proud when I got my first paycheck. Yeah. What happened nice after that? Nothing much after that. Nothing until today. Today? Today's one of the nicest days in my life. Me too. Were you ever stuck on anyone? Once. I was kind of soft on a girl once. What happened? Oh, when the fireworks died down and I got back from overseas, I just guess I wasn't up to her speed anymore. You know, kind of slowed down a bit. But I'm... I'm glad nothing happened. Why? Well, so we could have today, you and me, just like this. I'm glad, too. Sally? Yes, Jim. Sally, I want to marry you. Sally, we could have lots of little gas There's a whole chain of them. Maybe after that, a flock of kids to make change. Small change at first. You could be superintendent of the railroad and everything. Oh. Sally, I... I forgot to ask you. Well, do you think you could learn to care for me? I, I mean the way I am and everything. Would you mind it? Drew, how can you even ask such a thing? Why, you're the nicest, sweetest person in the world. Well, that's... That's wonderful, Sally. Well, come on, what about it? Gee, Drew, could you just give me a little more time? Sure. Sure I could. Oh, Sally, I'm... I'm crazy about it. <laughs> what am I doing? What's wrong with it? Why don't you come back to the parlor and have a cup of coffee with me? It'll pick you up. I couldn't. Well, I always need a pickup this time of the afternoon. So if you don't mind, I'll go on back. But you stay right there now. I'll be back in just a few minutes. And don't you worry. Well, my dear, I've checked you thoroughly. You know what the trouble is, don't you? No. I see. Well? You're going to have a baby. What? Well, now, child, there's nothing to worry about. Babies are born every 11 seconds, night and day. You'll be fine. Now, suppose I send your husband up to see you. I have no husband. It's not him. Not him. I see. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Oh, please, Doctor. No one must know about this. You won't tell anyone, will you? Please don't let anyone know. If that's the way you want it. Now, don't worry. We'll take care of you. In the meantime, you must get plenty of rest and proper food. So you'll have a nice, healthy baby. Now, Mrs. Nye knows my phone number. So don't hesitate to call. Meantime, try and get some rest. And remember, take those tablets that I prescribed. <laughs> Shall I? 
you all right, Doc. May I go up and see her? Well, I wouldn't suggest that right now. Why don't you wait until she sends for you? Well, what's wrong with her? Well, she's in a highly nervous condition and needs a lot of rest. Goodbye, Mrs. Goodbye, Mason. Doctor. If she needs anything, call me. I'm sure she'll be up to oh, par in a couple sure of days. Oh, I'm sure she will, Doctor, yeah. Well, I guess he knows what he's doing, but phoning to find out how she is. Oh, you'll be phoning all right if I know you. <laughs> she'll be all right. Now, don't you worry. Go on home and get some rest. You're the one that looks sick. <laughs> Yes, Mrs. Stone is expecting you. Reverend Culbertson called. Will you come with me? That will be all right, dear. Mrs. Stone will be with you in a moment. Thank you. You're Sally Kelton, aren't you? Yes. Are you Sally? Nineteen. And where do you live? Well, I've been living in a rooming house, but I checked out of there. Have you any family? Are your parents living? Yes. But I don't want them to know about this. Well, let me ask you something, dear. Don't you think perhaps you should tell them? If they knew about this, they might want to help you. Oh, please, Mrs. Stone. I couldn't bear it if they found out. I couldn't expect them to understand. Not this. Do you wish to tell me the name of the father and his whereabouts? Perhaps we could communicate with him. I don't know where he is. He went away. I haven't heard from him since. I see. Well, tell me, my dear. Have you decided whether you want to keep your baby after it's born? I don't know. Well, we'll discuss that question later. You'll have every opportunity to decide for yourself. And in the meantime, this will be your home. 
for the time being, you'll be asked to help with the duties around the home. And you will be expected to abide with the regulations of the institution. Thank you, Mrs. Stone. And remember, we're your friends, not your judges. You won't let my family know I'm here, will you? No, dear, if that is your wish. As I was saying, well, look at the doctrine we get. My mother said she never got as much attention with any of her kids. My mother thinks I'm going to have a boy because I'm so short-winded. She hopes it's a boy. But I don't care which I get, if it's healthy. What do you want? Irene, I don't know. What do you want? I guess I just want the baby. I don't care whether he's a boy or a girl. <laughs> oh, well. Hello, Craig's Gasseterium. Yeah, this is Drew Baxter. Oh, hello, Mrs. Nye. You what? Yes, I heard from her today. Just a second, I'll read the letter to you. Dear Mrs. Nye, will you please give Dr. Williams the enclosed $5 I owe him? Also, could you forward the dressing gown I left behind? I think of you often and how kind you were to me. A Merry Christmas. Sincerely, Sally Kelton. Yeah, but if she said where she is. 500 Riley Street, Watertown. Wait a minute, Miss Knight. 500, where at Riley Street? Watertown. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Mrs. Knight. Someone? Yes, I'm, I'm looking for Sally Kelton. Is she here? Is she sick? What is your name? Drew, uh, Drew Baxter. Are you related to this Miss Kelton? Then she is here. What's happened? I didn't say Miss Kelton was here. I merely asked you that because you seemed so anxious and so troubled about this Miss Kelton. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm not a relative. You see, we we work together in Capital City, and I asked her to marry me. Everything seemed fine, and she took ill. After that, she just disappeared. The landlady gave me the address. See, it's quite plain. Yes, I see. Mr. Baxter, perhaps you don't know. But this is a home for unwed mothers. What? I'm truly sorry I can't help you. I wish I could. Because... Because what, Mrs. Stone? Because this young lady you're looking for appears to have someone who loves her very dearly. And only a person who has a great heartache, a great problem, would run from such a love. I don't know you, Drew, but somehow I feel that eventually you will find what you're looking for.
somebody can use that. Thanks a lot for being so kind, Mrs. Stone. Thanks very much. You're right, I did find what I was looking for. Don't mention my name to her. I wasn't here. thinking about? Oh, what it'll be like having a baby. Joan. I don't know what I'm going to do about the baby. I know what you mean. You see, I know I'm going to love him. I keep thinking about somebody else owning him. Me too. Oh, Sally. I'm awfully scared. I don't know what's going to happen to me. I feel safe here. Maybe I could stay and help out. You see, I don't have any folks. Only an aunt. She'd never understand what's happened to me. She's the kind that thinks she ought to be married to have children. Don't you know something? Well, so do I. I always pictured it that way. Somehow it didn't work out. You can certainly get a rotten deal, can't you? Joan. <laughs> Don't, honey. Don't. I knew a good guy once. He was too good for me. Which one's Irene's baby? You got me. They all look alike. They do, don't they? Uh-huh. But it's a girl. And her mother was so sure she was going to have a boy. Because she's short-winded. Hmm. Did Irene have a bad time? Pretty bad. But she sure feels happy now. Says that's what she wanted all the time. A girl.
young lady. All yours. Five minutes. Hello, little fella. Are you glad to see me today? You know, you look like me, don't you? I hope you don't mind. What are we going to do? Tell me. You're a smart little fella. What do you think? You see, they tell me I have to decide whether you and I stick together. Or whether we both go our own ways. Tell me. Couldn't we try it? You and I in a cold water flat. With no one to take care of you while I'm at work. Couldn't you take care of yourself? Sure you could. Wash your own diapers. Feed yourself. Fix your own bottle. about If I do give him up, Mrs. Stone, can you tell me a little about the people who will get him? Only what I've told you before, dear. They will be people of your own race and your own religion. They will be a couple who will give him love and affection, a good education and security. They'll be husband and wife who have wanted a child very badly, dear, and haven't been able to have one of their own. I understand. What would you do if you were me? Oh, I don't know, my dear. That's a decision no one can make for you. I've been thinking and thinking. All the arguments on one side and all the arguments on the other. I only want to do what's right for him. What can I give? Love and love? That's about all. No money, no future, nothing. Would you rather wait a little and decide later, dear? No. It wouldn't be fair to him outside now. You're certain? Yes. I don't want him to grow up without a father. I don't want him to look at me and despise me. You must never hear the word they call children like that. I'll sign now. Here, dear. Sign here, please. Thank you, Mrs. Stone, for everything you've done for me and the baby. It's all a part of our job, Sally. Mm -hmm. What will you do now, dear? What are your plans? Oh, I don't know. Get a job, I guess. Will you go home? No. I've done enough to them already. Maybe someday when I can make it up to them. <laughs>
Sally. Mrs. Stone. I've got to see Mrs. Stone. What's wrong? Mrs. Stone isn't here. Mrs. Stone isn't here. Really? What is it, dear? I've got to speak to someone. I've got to speak to someone. I've changed my mind. I've got to have him back. I've got to. I should never have let him go. Go on. Day after day, I see them. They're all around me. Families. And they're all happy. And children. In the street when I go to work in the morning. When I come home at night. A child and I think of mine. And I want to scream. Because I'm sick inside. Sick because I want him so. <laughs> I've got to have him back. I've got to have him back. Sally, Sally. Shh. There, there, baby. Shh. people who adopted your baby. I can't read everything that's in it. The name they call him now and things like that. But I want to read part of the letter to you. I wish you could have been with us last Sunday when the baby was baptized. The minister said he had never seen a more healthy baby or a more cheerful one. The little thing almost seemed to understand that he was assuring himself a future place in heaven and that it was a very intelligent thing on his part to have reserved it so far in advance. He's just as much our child as if he were our own flesh and blood. And we couldn't love him more if he were. God has truly answered our prayer. Can you see now that you've done the right thing? Sally, I feel for you. I understand your unhappiness. But this letter should be a comfort to you. You've made two other people very happy. Sally, you're young. Your whole life is before you. You'll marry, have a husband, other children of your own.
Okay, the assistant DA wants to see you. I don't know what you've done, kid, but plead guilty. Go easier on you. So I presume we all understand the facts of this case. And the most unusual situation it is. Have you anything further to say, Miss Kelly? Nothing. Except I didn't mean to kidnap him. I just wanted to hold him for a while. I thought it looked like mine. As an assistant district attorney, I have no authority to recommend any course of action. However, there was a story in the paper about your arrest last night. That's how I happened to get a call this morning from a Mrs. Elizabeth Stone. Mrs. Banning knows about this. I must say that what she told me gave me an idea. You see, there is a law that no one may be tried twice for the same wrong. I think it's a good law. In a way, you've been tried once, Miss Kelton. And you sentenced yourself to a bitter memory that only time may erase. In view of these things, I'm going to leave it up to the child's mother, you, Mrs. Banning, to make the decision. You may drop the charges, Mrs. Banning, or not, as you will. I think I understand. It's just the same with my husband. I'd like to drop the charges. Thank you. Thank you. Let me go! Let me go! Don't be... 